People, what's up? What's up, people? Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the YouTube video, whatever you're watching. I'm trying to get my graphics tablet to work here. It lights up blue sometimes when it works. Come on, come back to me. I want to draw today. I have to draw with my mouse today. Well, anyways, um, while I'm trying to get this to work, what I'm going to work on today is, is another new enemy. This is going to be... Oh, cool. It works. Yeah. 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 So the new enemy I'm going to work on today... Let's close, it, close out the droid bat, which turned out awesome. Yo, Momir, what's up? In fact, I'll show you the new, the droid bats turn out really great. I got a whole type of swarm mechanic going on now because they can, I got a new, a new behavior word. See, now the bats actually all move in unison. They speed up in unison and they all slow down in unison again. Um, and then they again speed up. So it's a lot like the Zelda 1 bats. Oops, sorry, that was probably too loud. So yeah, that's all from this right here. This line, speed triangle 12.0. That means it sets the that means set the speed of the current bat in a triangle wave based on the lifetime of the bat over 12 seconds. So zero to six seconds, it's speeding up. It's a triangle wave. So the triangle wave starts at zero. At six seconds, the triangle wave hits one. And then by 12 seconds, the triangle wave is hit back to zero. And I could even change this to sine or square waves as well. But I like the triangle wave. Very linear, very um, very Zelda 1. Yes, yeah, totally right. They're like TIE Fighters. I was thinking that yesterday too. I was like, they look exactly like the advanced TIE Fighter that uh, Darth Vader flew. In fact, there was one little touch-up I wanted to do to the dying animation right where it does... This I want to do some um, some some brightness on the um, on top of the actual bat. So I'm gonna get a really bright version of that. Set the opacity to something like seventy percent. Let's see what that looks like. Since I might want to change that, I think I want to do a new layer for it. Come on, graphics tablet. Oh, man. Come on. Seriously, this thing. All right, come on. Yeah, so I'm gonna take this, put it on a new layer. That ought to do. Okay, so now I'm going to do that again. Really bright. Actually, I'd like to move this back to 100% opaque first. Before it was 50%. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, man. Just drew all that at 70% opacity. There. 100% opaque. Oh, man. God damn it. This graphics tablet. Oh, it's driving me crazy. Got to get a new one or fix it. Oh my god, now it's just like going out every five seconds. There. All right, and we'll do like a half desaturated, something like that. Get some light that's hitting this, these actual pieces here. What's up, Regan Knight? How long did it take to get pixel art? Um, well, I don't know, probably about a year, something like that. Um, and I do have recommendations on how to do it. So I'm really glad you asked, Dragon Knight. And welcome to the stream, by the way. Um, I did do a little, um, a little mini series of videos about how to go into becoming a, an artist. So maybe that'll help. Okay, so now we got we got that. Let's put this frame at 50% opacity. Maybe maybe more. Yeah, something like that. We're at eighty-one percent opacity. Okay, so now I can re-render this. Alex Peta, what's up? Yeah, you're welcome, Regan Knight. Yep, this is the one little touch I wanted to do to to um just make the bat even a little bit better. Yeah, now you can more clearly see the explosion. Wow. Weapon Crowbar, what's up, man? Welcome back to the stream. Dude, what is going on with my computer? It's slow right now. It's like it's running something. OBS is eating a ton of CPU right now. It normally doesn't do 50%. What the heck, OBS? You having some problems right now, huh? You need a, you need a diaper? You need a pacifier? We got no drop frames. I don't know. I don't know. Let me go and see if I can get some um, some actual ice so we can work today without without worries. You finally see messages? What messages? Oh, you mean like you're finally seeing messages right here? Crazy. One sec. All right, so I got some flat ice. The chat was blocked, what? Yeah, there, stay cool today, computer. I have a MacBook Pro, so it's like, it likes to be cool. Be cool. MacBook Pro. Okay, so today I'm gonna draw a new enemy. This is going to be based on this, it's sort of like a drop, but a tiny drop, kind of like a, a pygmy type of drop. So I'm going to go open up the existing drop guy. And this drop is, I'm going to have to draw four, four different directions for this guy because he's going to be able to shoot. Um, it's going to shoot like either little rocks or, or darts. 
Okay, so here's the drop. Mr. Orange. Mr. Orange, what? Que? Como? Yeah, so we'll call this guy. Mm, Small drop? <laughs> kind of a small drop, I guess, was is meant to be. Alright, so first thing I'm gonna do is get um get proportions down. So I want this guy to be small, but I don't know how small. This is gonna be a um an overworld enemy, so that you're never gonna find this guy up in the dungeons. He's only gonna be on the Overworld. He's gonna look. His mask is gonna look a lot different. He's gonna be tinier body, that kind of stuff. Oh, d oh the oh the orange, right from the bat. Right, right. He was. He's like an orange exploding. His head's like an orange on a toothpick. So I guess I'll just I'll resize it. Whoa, what's how do I know that? What? Oh man. Yeah, I'm definitely not gonna call him that. In fact, I should probably change my My stream title. It's not meant to be derogatory at all. In fact, I was looking on the Wikipedia for pygmies earlier today, looking at their peoples and different kinds of people that are considered. Stream title. It's not meant to be derogatory at all. In fact, I was looking on the Wikipedia for. Pygmies. There we go. Okay, so yeah, let's um. Dude, oh, I'm getting such. My graphics tablet is so messed up. There, finally. All right. Let's get, okay, let's start with the, maybe half the height. <laughs> Look at that, that's crazy. All right, so I'm gonna export that, render it, and just put it in the game to see how big it actually looks. Yeah, I know it totally is, right? Yep, things have things have changed. I guess you could say for the better. Oh god. Dude. Oh, I can't use my I can't use my graphics tablet today. Which sucks. <clears throat> Cuz I like to use my graphics tablet for making art, but it is messed up. It's so messed up. I have to use my mouse. Okay, mouse, let's make some graphics today. Mouse, okay, so we got the drop. I'm gonna copy this. We got the small drop. And same thing with the behavior. We start with the drop behavior, but then modify it. This is gonna be an enemy that shoots darts or, or rocks or something like that. So the behavior is going to be a lot different than the drop. The drop just runs at you and tries to hit you with his horns. This guy isn't even going to have horns. We got the small drop. Prop, uh, behavior, and now we got to want to. First thing to do is hook up that behavior to this profile so and then the next thing I'm going to hook up um, that first little animation we started to do to get a feeling for the proportions how big this guy should be the next thing I want to do is go to the world and actually make it so it can create this type of enemy
That should be it, actually. Okay, let's go put the player at the beginning. And we'll go and play until we can find these guys. Tappy, what's up, man? <laughs> I haven't watched Breaking Bad, so I don't know what you're talking about, but I can assume I look like somebody. Welcome back, man. Welcome. Okay, all we got are blobs so far. I want to find a screen with some pygmies. I mean, not pygmies. Small drops. It's not working. Oh, one more thing. I need to change. Game Vivo. What's up, Game Vivo? Does it matter what people tell you? I think what matters is what you tell yourself, man. I'm going to go bat minus one so I don't have this problem next time. Unlockables? Like, unlockable what? What do you want to see unlocked, Rega? Unlockable playable characters? Unlockable items? Unlockable enemies? What are you talking about? Let's see if we can find this guy this time. Still no luck? What's up? Got no... No small drops, guys. Oh, you know what? I forgot to even hook it up. Does Coco's have an achievement library? Um, I don't think it does have a direct one. They have a lot of extensions. But what I'm going to use achievements is... I'm going to use Steam's library. Steam has an excellent... Um, achievement library built right into their their Steam system, so you can check it out. Versus all your friends and everything on Steam, it's it's re it's really great. So I'm gonna use Steam's, and also Steam's achievements can actually be used to kind of track statistics for your game. So you can set a tiny achievement for like when when the player first gets the sword or something like that, and then I can track how many people that actually play the game have played it enough to start it you know what I mean and then I can track how many people finish the game how many people get halfway through the game and things like that through achievements okay so we need to add one more thing here where we have a small drop three to eleven of them so far no, yeah, Momir, that's a great question. No, you can't use Steam's library on iPhone, and Android. So then, so every yeah, every system you go to um, is gonna have a few different things that need to be custom for that platform, like iPhone and Android. Um, iPhone has its own achievement library with um, game with Game Kit, and then Android has its own achievement library with Google Play. So you really have to do that custom for every platform. So my my core game code stays exactly the same for every engine, for I mean for every platform. But then yeah, there's some little things like achievements and um, leaderboards, things like that. Those are all like also in-app purchases. Even though I'm not, I don't have any plans for in-app purchases, in-app purchases would be something you'd have to do custom for every platform. Items, bosses, characters. Ah oh, yeah. Yeah, Reganite, definitely. The, there's definitely plans for that. Um, there's there's so many ideas already in the list, and a lot of these are unlockable type things. So a lot of these are um, ideas people have have put forth on the stream so far, 
and I'd love to get to a lot of these. And in fact, what I what I probably will do is I probably will have to pick and choose which ones I want to do for the game release. But a lot of these I'll actually implement as free upgrades. So I'm gonna I'm gonna upgrade this game a lot. Like I'll probably keep updating this game for six months to a year after I release it, and then it'll just get more and more free updates that'll have cool stuff in it each time. So yeah, there'll be tons of. I hope there. I hope for tons of unlockable items, bosses, characters, and um, sub-quests, things like that. Yeah, anything, you're right, anything to make each world a little bit more unique. The likeness is real. Nano, what's up? <laughs> that guy's from Breaking Bad. What's up, man? Uh, nice. Taffy, by the way, I like your picture on, on Twitter. It's hilarious. All right. I want to see some small drop enemies now. Somewhere. Come on. There's got to be some of them somewhere. Unless I did the math wrong again. Hmm. Here, no, we got some yellow blobs. Wow, okay, well, oh, you know what? They might just be really, really stuck in the corners. Let's see if like, I have an output of where they are. You can't see the title? Uh, I just changed it, but maybe it didn't stick. Oh, it's from Gamescom? Nice. I like it. Yeah, I just changed it because I... Oh, it looks like it's fine. Huh, I don't know what's up with that. Might be Twitch doing that today. I don't know. I like to blame things on Twitch myself. Oh yeah. Okay, so let's check the output and see if it can if it's showing me where it might be putting those guys. Looks like it's not. Wait, no, I think it does it at the end. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Foe kind two. 1350, that's one of them. Let's just put the player right there. Ah, weird. Weird. I don't know what's up with that. But I do know that Twitch does get really twitchy and glitchy almost all the time. So There they are. Hey, look how small they look. Oh, and they start it turn into regular drops once they start moving. Okay, so I want to take their um their property list and remove the Wait, where are they? Small drop. So I'm gonna get rid of their all these all these animations we don't need. <laughs> Global warming is Twitch's fault? Probably is. It's kind of globally warm in here today. I might need it. Oh yeah, look at them. They don't even move while they walk. But okay, so I was trying to all I was trying to do there was get a sense of proportion, right? I wanted to see how big these guys felt. And I think they feel a little bit too small to me. I'd like them to be a tiny bit taller. So I'm going to go back. Um, originally I had put them at half. So I'm going to try not quite half. Get a sense for the proportions there. They're cute, right? But they're so dangerous. Man, it is hot enough to have a fan on today. I'm gonna get a. I gotta go get a fan. Look at that. Okay, right. That's about. That's a little better, because they're not gonna have those horns. Ooh, they're quick little guys. Yeah, let's get rid of the horns real quick.
see if they still look about right. Actually, that was a little too much. All right, so in relation to the player, they still look, they look way tinier without their horns. So they might need to be a tiny bit bigger, actually. Nah, I kind of like them about like that. That's pretty good. Look like little kids. Okay, I'm going to get a fan. Fung, what's up, man? Welcome back to the stream today. All right, good. We've got a sense of proportion for these guys. <laughs> he does. He's a, he's a child killer. So bad. All right. So, all right. I want these guys to be looking kind of like the dropped guys. I might change their hue a little bit, and I definitely want to change up their mask. Maybe their eye color, too. So, I'm just going to go right into it. What shape should this be? I was thinking almost like they have hair. Yeah, more of a mask like this. Something like this. Marge Simpson hair? <laughs> uh, what are they? They're basically... They're part of an ancient evil army. These guys are half... They're biological creatures that have nanites in them. And so they're, they're kind of like biologically engineered creatures. So they're science fiction style... Fan, like a mix of sci-fi and fantasy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was just about to do. I was going to play with the hue. But I like that idea of having Marge Simpson hair. Let's see what it looks like. Funny. <laughs> right? Totally lol. I think I might do that. Let me play with the hue a little bit here. Where's the females? 
They are not here yet, but they will be. What will they look like? Maybe these guys, maybe these are females. Hmm, that's fu that's funny. They look kind of male still to me. <laughs> right? <laughs> I like that the Simpsons version. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna do this with a uh, with a layer. So I don't know if I'm going to commit to this green color. I'm just going to go try it in the game first to see what they look like when they're green. German policemen? <laughs> Is that what they look like, really? In green? Yeah, they're a bit too green, right? They're like, um... They match the trees a bit too much. So I'm not going to go with that. But maybe shifting the hue a little bit. Like that, that turns him into a little bit brown. Ryan Marge Simpson, yep. Inspired. They look like monkey hats almost to me. Yeah, I might, I might. What's up, Kino? Welcome to the stream, man. Yeah, it is kind of a Fez hat, totally. If it were totally bright red, it would be Fez for sure. So I've got a hue plus 15 here. I'm gonna do the same thing. So that I can see what they look like about like this. Yeah, yeah, totally. That's what they are. They're half organic, half robotic. 
Nostrobot, what's up, man? I'm doing good. Professional novice, what's up? <laughs> Thanks for the two hey guys. <laughs> I'm totally playing around here. I'm not actually committing to this art. I'm just I'm playing around with it really very quickly so I can get an overall what the heck? Oh. I get an overall feeling for what this guy should be like. I find that when you change stuff in in Photoshop, you can kind of get a quick feeling for it, but until you actually put it in the game, that's that's when you really see. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like them brownish like that. What's up, Betaville? Or maybe not. I'm so torn. Oh, wait. That one had double the brown. That's probably why it looks so weird. Let's try that again. Yeah, it is supposed to be a mask. Like I said, I'm totally playing with this. I, I, all I've done so far is I squeeze down a big drop into a smaller body, and I'm just playing with it first before I actually draw any art. So this looks like I actually drew that, but I really didn't. All I did was I squished it. So I want to, I'm want i getting a feeling for colors and proportions right now before I commit to any sort of art where I actually animate it and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I think I kind of liked him better without, um, I liked him better without the brown myself. Are you thinking of sloth? Ah, uh, makes sense. You rarely have resource code open? What's, what do you mean by resource code? What you mean, man? Maybe it's just the, what the heck? Oh. That's so weird. Every time it does that. Okay, so if, maybe if I um, if it wasn't quite so. They're more like plus ten, or plus nine. Let's try that. Oh, 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 I just, I don't know, I just remember all, pretty much all of Coco's 2DX, but there's, you know, it's not, I, I'd also use autocomplete a lot, so like, if I want to, if I want to do a sprite, and I want to do a new method on sprite, I start typing what I think it is, like init, oh, there's init with file, init with sprite frame, so that's why I never, I never really use any kind of thing like dash, or any kind of documentation or whatever. I'm just pretty, I'm very familiar with Coco Studio X. I've been using this game engine for years, like four years now. So I, I should be, I should be pretty knowledgeable about it at this point. Okay, so I, I'm trying them a little bit less brown. I wasn't quite happy with that hue. It somehow seemed to clash to me. Yeah, that's better. Okay. I'm going to commit to that. Okay, so this frame, I'm going to get rid of this. Hey, thanks for following. Okay, so now I can start drawing. I can actually start drawing this guy.
give him some kind of skin color. I'm thinking maybe his skin color is actually black. Like really black. Or maybe just a dark brown. Let's take this brown and make it really, really black. And I'm thinking he's going to have, um, I don't know about this Fez hat. It's so funny, right? I kind of want to play with the Fez hat a little bit first. What's up, hoo, hoo boss? I know, it does seem too long, right? That's what Marge Simpson's hair seems like, too. What? Oh, I've seen this problem before. When I render video... Oh, no wonder it was doing... It was rendering it out, because these are half a second... So let's just put them back in common. Drop boss idle zero. It's totally what game dev is about: putting red hats on things, making stuff too big, playing. You know, you gotta play with it, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> Thirty-two pez hats. Wow. I don't know. They do look funny. I gotta give it that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and play without... I'm gonna try it without the hat at first. I might give him a hat later, but I can always start without the hat. So let's go with an eye color now. Maybe that red color would actually work well for the eyes. Or the black. Maybe only some of them have a hat. Yeah, maybe. Oh man, with those red eyes, they totally remind me of Jason or something crazy. Yes, yeah, it definitely does. Yeah, when you use the export video, um, it uses the how many, it just basically, if you had 10 seconds, or if you had a whole second worth of uh, stuff, it would give you, and you set frame rate, you set your frame rate right here, right? 10 frames a second, or whatever, and that gives me 10 frames per a second. So if I had one single frame, but it was a second long, it would give me 10 actual ping files with the render video. So you gotta set that here in your frame rate, and then make sure you, this is set right here. So really, that should be set to 0.1 seconds, and I'll, that will. I know they're so so creepy, right?
still want to play with them a little bit more, make them more unique, more... I don't know, less... Less like the drop, the other drop guys. So I think I want them to have, um, what do you call those? Uh, what are those things called? Those little bungee things that you, you that the kids use and they go like that and they let them go and they got. I can't believe I can't remember what that's called. Anyways, I'm gonna draw one. Slingshot, yes. Thank you, Nostrobot. A slingshot. Right. Eklof, what's up, man? Yo. Welcome back. Welcome back. Really? You have 10 different names for a slingshot? Whoa. It's crazy. Whoa. Ow, schwoozle, flish. Flesh, Switzel, Sweezel, Catapult. Dang, you got a lot of them. Stein Schluter, Oder Einfach Schluter. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Crazy. I know, it doesn't look like a slingshot yet, does it? No, it does not. Maybe if it were smaller. Still just playing with this guy. I have no idea how this guy should be i'm just trying to play with his colors and stuff until i get something that's that's like yes that's it if he has funny hair like this this could be really fun to play with actually Ah. Oh, cool. Right? Let me try that. I'll try that. Cool, cool. Let me try that out. I like that because um, Rock himself, the, the hero of this game, you don't know the whole game whether he has two eyes or one. Und ich kennen davon nur katapult und Stein Schluter. I'm not sure what you said there or what I said. Yeah, it does blend in too much with the ground, but especially when he first starts. What color model am I using? I don't know. I don't know what that is. I don't even know what a color model is. Sorry, man. Maybe you can help me. Maybe you can tell me what color model I'm using. Hello, Mel Ant. Yeah, you can see. It looks like a clown nose. 
Let's see what this looks like so far. Oh, oh, RGB. Oh, yeah, I'm using RGB. Yeah, now they're, yeah. Um, the bright white hands, they look too weird, for sure. So, yeah, mail in. This game is like um, Zelda 1, except that it's procedurally generated. So, um, when you start this game, you... you um, you start with a six letter code. So you enter like six letters and that gives you an entire world based on those six letters. So this world, I'm not sure what, I think this is the world wizard or whatever. So I entered the six letters wizard when I started and that gave me this world. And um, there's dungeons, there's like, there's caves. And right now I'm working on a new type of enemy called the, the little small drop guy. He's gonna have a slingshot and shoot it at you and stuff. You've got all these, I got, you got tons of items, things like that. You can throw your top hat. It's just like Zelda 1, except it's procedurally generated and it's new. Yeah, yeah, RGB is what I use. I use, I use RGB color space, and then um, I use HSV sometimes in my game, actually. But I, I, always, you, I have to convert to R HSV and then convert back to RGB. So I never use CMYK. Cool, man. Nice. Yeah, it's like the the first Legend of Zelda. Thanks, man. So yeah, I'm still working on this guy. I don't like I don't like how he has whitish hands now. That didn't work. But I like his red eye. That's pretty cool. Let's see what he looks like with darker hair. Maybe colorful hair. And I'm going to get him back to having sort of like brownish arms. Healers and reanimators? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's super tribal, right? With that that headpiece sort of thing. Uh, Mel Int. Um, yeah, I code from scratch. Yep. I use the game engine Cocos 2DX, but everything else on top of that is from scratch. What the heck? It's just like all of a sudden crashed. But yeah, I use the Cocos 2DX game engine. It's pretty cool. It's, co it's open source, it's cross-platform, and it's awesome. Loeb, what's up, man? Welcome to the stream. Yeah, I was originally planning on him having a blowgun, but I think that would be too much like Diablo style of small enemy. Yeah, I like this, though, with red hair or maybe blue hair or yellow hair or something like that. Try some blue hair. Randomize the hair color. I wish I could do that. I would have to write a custom shader to do that. So I'm going to have to start with one particular hair color at first. And then later on, I guess I could do a, it would be a lot of work to actually randomize the hair color. Yeah, they're, they're not actually random. They're, I've actually drawn those separately, those that many colors. Hello, Spymore. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing?
Yeah, blue doesn't. I don't know. Blue's too. Blue's not cool. I like this red actually. This red was pretty cool. Okay, so I, I'm keep on playing with these all these different colors and stuff because I know the second I start animating him, it's gonna be a lot of work to go rechange any of the colors. So I've kind of got committal anxiety, commitment anxiety, story of my life. Let's try yellow before before I commit. Look how bright that is. Thanks, bye Mark. <laughs> Whoa, that's so yellow. Yeah, the red was cool. The red was cool enough. Stick with the red. And one last thing, I want to verify that his hands and stuff are about the right color. Before I start animating. Yeah, so his hands look really, they're light enough that you can't really see them. I'm going to change that up. Maybe I'll go with an alternate hue, actually. Or desaturating. A little more color, maybe? Yeah, I think this is a little bit too, yeah, war painting or just kind of like some kind of <laughs> a Mega Man cannon. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe his slingshot should be inside that cannon. Shoot, you know what, that's a great idea. Let's screw this. Let's turn off that. Let's make him actually have a Mega Man cannon. I like that idea a lot. And desaturate this little pop of color on his arm. Maybe give him some yellow too, actually. Yeah, I like that. Arcane, what's up? What software do you use for video editing? I use 
Premier Pro, Adobe's Premier Pro. Yeah, I don't have that much experience with it, but um, I used to actually just use iMovie for Mac, and then I, I eventually moved to Adobe Premiere Pro because it can do a lot more. Um, but I'm still really inexperienced with Premiere Pro, so I, I would not consider myself very good at giving advice about it. But um, if you have access to Premiere Pro, I think it's worth a shot, worth trying it. But there's a lot of other great video editors out there. And in fact, I use ScreenFlow, or used to use ScreenFlow, which is just like a... Um, a screen recording application which actually had a pretty decent video editor in inside of it um, but lately I've, I've upgraded from screen flow into screen flick which is way better quality and can record so much better hope that helps there I'm sure there's probably here on the people on the stream that have questions or I mean answers hello Alvaro Martin Lopez welcome to the stream how do I record the GIFs? I have a little a little setting inside my game where I can turn on this always screen cap thing which goes and actually takes a screenshot every single frame and it, call, it calls this function called utils capture screen inside Coco Studio X which basically just saves a ping file every single as fast as it possibly can and then I go and I convert those ping files to a GIF using a custom script so you know what? So many people have their own their own techniques, but I use convert. Convert is actually part of the image magic um, suite of tools. So I use this. I can use convert. I set a delay. I set loop zero to make it loop forever. I use no dithering, highest quality it can. Um, this color space seems to work well for me. And then I just pass in all the ping files, and it gives me out a, a GIF file. So I hope that makes sense to you. I've seen the be I've seen much better gifts. I have no idea how he does it, but the guy uh, Anton Kudin that makes um, Megasphere, he has pretty much, in my opinion, the best the best gifts I've ever seen. And also, um, Miguelito has some really good ones too. He's the guy that's making Chicken Sword. Yeah, you know what? This guy's worth committing to. I like this guy. It's going to be really fun to animate his hair, too, as he moves around. His hair can bounce up and down, or feathers, or whatever these are. So, let's um, let's try him one more last time. We'll see what he looks like with all these new little colors. Fraps. Yeah, there's so many different tools. I, don't even heard, I haven't even heard of fraps. But, um, oh, and then also, oh, another great one that guys that do great gifts are, um, uh, the guys making, oh, what's that? Um, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. Their, their, their game is, it's like this heavy metal style game. Yep, so that yellow is just a tiny bit too bright, and the, the bottom red is a bit too bright. So I'm going to take these yellows, tone them down. And same thing with this bottom red. This bottom red is kind of in the lower half of his body, so it's not really going to have as much light reflecting off of it. Yo, Lime Studios, what's up, man? No, this is not a melee fighter. He's a distance fighter, so he's gonna um, he's gonna actually shoot stuff out of his arm. We've just decided, thanks to uh, who suggested that? Sorry, wait. Oh, Loeb, yeah, Loeb. Thanks, Loeb.
Screen to GIF, huh? Oh wow, that looks great. So, question: Does it give you does it give you small enough gifts to actually upload to um, to Twitter? And I guess for my game, it would be a lot different because my game has a lot more colors, so it wouldn't compress as well. What sucks about Twitter is you can only have three megabytes. Gift cam, okay. You you totally are. You're the executive producer. What's up, executive producer? Whoops. It's like, is it Windows only? Looks like it might be just Windows. Ah. Oh, yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, you're welcome. I mean, yeah, so however the heck you're going to do it, you know, like, everybody's got their own technique, it seems, for doing GIFs. I don't, I don't know which one's best. I just kind of do it how I do it. I just do it the best I can for my game. And I've definitely created some really bad GIFs and some some of that are pretty good. So, it, you know, it all depends on how many frames you've got in it, too. So that's better. But I think I want the red on the bottom to be a little bit more. Ah, okay. This red, I want it to be a little bit darker, a little bit less saturated, maybe. I don't know. Saturation's cool. All right, looks like we're about ready to animate this guy. Yeah, that's better. Just a little pop of color on his legs. So yeah, these are not gonna be melee fighters. They're gonna be totally behaving differently. So um, let me get... Oh, dang, sorry, man. Yeah, so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a quick drink of water and come back. So hot today. Okay, so next is going to be animating him, making him walk, making him shoot stuff out of his arm. All right, so let's start with him walking. Call this frame. Frame zero. Oh, this is idle, sorry. So yeah, it's idle. Let's make him look at the camera.
Or he's looking over his shoulder more. Crazy. Uh. So if he's looking this far over his shoulder, his his body's gonna shift a little bit. So that would be, this is more like it's frame two. And then I get a frame in the middle here where he's kind of like halfway turned. What's up, Ethan? Uh, no, I did not get the message you sent me. I don't... Uh, I've had people say they tried to send me a message on Twitch before. I don't know what that means. Is there some, like, messaging thing or an email on Twitch or something like that? Yeah, everything looks good except for this last little bit here. Yeah, I don't know. I've never done that before, so sorry, man. That's why I haven't, I haven't seen those. I didn't even know you could do that.
Yep. Yeah, you can. There's Hackintosh, and there's also a lot of great um, things like uh, what's the VirtualBox. It's called VirtualBox. This thing's pretty great. You can install anything on on your. I like. I can install. I got Elementary OS. I got Linux on my Mac here. But yeah, you can. I think this works on Windows as well. But there's also VMware things like that. Okay, so this will work for his idle. Um, export render this video. Actually, I'm going to go remove all the other frames we've already created. Hey, and check that out. It's better than VMware, which is a paid solution. Hello, Sunset Kite. Welcome to the stream, man. Okay, so now he's got an idle animation. He's four frames in it, so I'm going to go hook that up into his property list. Idle. Okay, and the delay is going to be huge between each one. Something like point, point 0.6 at least. So they're just going to run around right now and <laughs> look left and right. <laughs> it's better than them just what they were. So anyway, so now the next thing will be to do to create like a walking animation. So save this as, we'll call this run even though they're just walking, I call all those animations run, so start here. Okay, so let's get we'll start with this frame. trying to remember how to walk it's left left arm forward right leg forward and then vice versa Not even cold anymore. All right, left leg, 
right arm. So then put his left arm back first. What if they hop like kangaroos? Interesting idea. Interesting idea, but it would be a bit complex. I think I'd rather start with an enemy I've designed to uh, for hopping. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with this simple idea of him just walking right now. But I like that I like that idea for a different enemy. Yes, Fung. Yeah, I stand. I stand. A program stand. I sit too. Sometimes I sit. Most of the time I'm standing while I stream and then I sit down for most of the rest of the day. I kind of go back and forth because it kind of takes away my energy from standing. I used to be able to stand all day and code, but not anymore. But I'm getting that energy back. Okay, I'm going to duplicate this layer and save it. Whoops. going on oh wow some weird Photoshop stuff going on here Uh, maybe, but it's going to be difficult to try and do that with um, so few pixels. Right, I really got one or two. So yeah, if I did, if I did more like that, it might look more like a cannon like that. Try that, yeah. Oh, there. Okay, so right arm back, left arm forward. Right arm back, left foot forward. And then the left leg back. And in this first frame, I'm going to make him pop his hair up a little bit, too. Yeah, super tribal, right? No, no, no. Okay, his hair is going to stay... The hair is going to stay the same on the first frame. And then the second frame, I'm actually going to make him... 
jump in the air a tiny bit. Something like this. What's up, Utterly? Welcome to the stream. Where do you go in Photoshop to do this? I'm just, I went to the timeline. So you go window, timeline, and then you gotta create a timeline. There's a little new timeline button, and then you gotta change your timeline right here to this view. So there's there's the frame view, and then there's this sort of like uh, keyframe kind of view, and I go, I use the frame view. Alright, so frame two uh, is going to move back down to the ground. This is where his, his right arm is going to be all the way, like almost all the way back. Really, all you're going to see is about like that. And this arm is going to be way forward. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Hey, what's up, Mike? I'm making a new enemy today. This is the small drops guy. He's tiny, but he shoots, um, he's going to shoot little like darts or something like that out of his arm. Should be pretty scary. Scary in a tribal way. All right, love. Thanks, man. Peace out. Sleep well, man. Hey, thanks for following.
Okay, I'm thinking I'm, I might be able to get away with this. No, this third frame here. So we, nah. Kind of want to see what I got so far, but. I know this third frame right here needs to be something else. This zero, one, two. Oh, this one should be three. Okay, this should be three. And then this should, this two, this is where he's like all the way in full stride to the front. Man, that turned out horrible. Okay, I guess it would be better if this leg, this front leg, was like even more in the front. Maybe something like that. I don't know. Okay, let's put this together, see what this is looking like, and I can clean it up as it goes. You could moonwalk backwards. Oh man, that'd be great. That might be a pleasant type of accident. It's so horrible. Oh man. Worst walking animation ever. <laughs> oh. Damn. Uh. Okay, so. a little better hmm 
You've done worse. <laughs> oh, man. I'm thinking if these two frames were swapped, it might be a little better looking. So if this guy here was up in the air, and this one here was down and back, or maybe just down. Oh, still bad. Still really bad. Yo, Mayladen, what's up, man? I'm trying to come to grips with this horrible animation for this guy's walk. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? Okay, this is so horrible, but I think I'm just going to put it in the game and keep making more animations. Like, I want to make an animation where he, where, he, where he shoots his weapon so I can flesh this guy completely out and, and like, make him actually do his attack and everything and, and work on his behavior. And then later on, when I'm in a little bit more of a fresh state of mind, I can go and actually fix this walk animation and make it better. Because right now... I know I could make this better, but I'm kind of caught in a spider's web of like being stuck with this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let go of it, save it as it is, and move on to the next animation. Even though it's horrible. Right? Well, that's one way to explain it. It's just not human. Okay, but let's see what it actually looks like. I know, maybe it will look actually good in the game. Who knows? You never know. <laughs> oh, they're so horrible. Oh, man. But they, at least they kind of look like they're walking now. They're like super stutter walking. They're like dancing. It is. It is. There's so many ways to explain this. Okay, so yeah. Um... That's horrible, but I'm moving on to the next animation. <laughs> I know, it's totally not walking, right? <laughs> oh. This is one of the joys of making video games. It's like moments like this where... It's just funny. Okay, this is going to be their shoot animation. Want him to bring his arm up. Wait. Yeah, I guess I could do this. Yeah, bring the arm up and then shoot. Hello, Odd Sean. I'm, and I'm creating a new enemy. This is a uh, small drop flag enemy. It's like this other enemy in the game already. So at least the idle animation turned out all right. Okay, so the shoot. All right, so he's gonna bring his arm up, squat down a little bit, and then bring his arm back down. Hey, thanks for following. Okay, so this arm is going to move back a little bit. This arm is going to start twisting. Yes, I'm making a game, man. It's called Songbringer. It's like Zelda. 
like the first Zelda, the very first Zelda, Legend of Zelda, except that it's procedurally generated. You're this character called Rock, and you're out in search of finding cactuses. And you eat the cactuses, and you can see secret walls. There's dungeons. There's mazes. It's all procedurally generated. Right? Cactuses, man. You know what I'm talking about, Tabby. Cactuses. Mmm. Cacti. Sounds so good, right? Wouldn't you just love to eat a cactus right now? So we'll get about halfway. Halfway-ish. Exactly, exactly. Okay, there, he's, he's now facing a little bit more this direction. And next frame. Hello, and Jifrak. Yes, C it's, I'm using C++. The game engine I'm using is Cocos 2DX. Okay, so this this frame, he's gonna have his arm all the way up. It's gonna be pretty, yeah, like that. I love this, the arm cannon. Good suggestion. And I want him to squat down a little bit in this frame too. So he's going to be like just squatting a little bit. Yo, what's up, Taco? What's my opinion on Microsoft XNA Studio? Um, well, I've never really been a fan of Microsoft in general. I, I mean, I did spend 10 years of my game development career making games on Windows. So, I, you know, at first I didn't really dislike Windows that much. But now, I mean, I've grown to dislike it quite a lot. So, I don't know. I, I definitely do not prefer to use XNA or any Microsoft stuff. But don't let that stop you from using it. Really, that's just my own opinion. And, um, you know, for some people it's a freaking awesome solution and it's a great, great engine so I don't want to discount it but everybody's every programmer's got their opinion on what they want to use or not use so that's my opinion what's my opinion on direct 2d same kind of thing um, I used to use it myself back in the 90s when, uh, when it was first coming out and stuff like that, I was using DirectX to make video games. And um, it was great. You know, it was a great thing back then. But today, I'd much rather use an open, 
an open source and cross-platform game engine, and that's why I use Coco Studio X. So I would much rather use OpenGL-based game engines than Direct 2D or whatever. Yeah, there's Mono Game now. Right, I forgot about that. Yeah, I forgot that X and A was. Yeah, yeah. I definitely prefer the reason I prefer Mac is because you've got a Unix operating system underneath it all, which is incredibly powerful. Um, I also like I like Linux as well, but I definitely prefer Mac just because it's got um, some pro software on it and. And it's a really stable and awesome operating system. I love Max. Yo, slow excellence. Yeah, there definitely was Direct 2D in the 90s, man. Yeah, DirectX came out. When did Direct? Uh, DirectX. I think it was 1995 or something like that. Yeah, Windows 95, OSR2. I'm pretty sure it was like 96 or something like that. Here you go. The first version of DirectX was released in September of 1995. Oh, what's the difference? Oh, sorry, man. I thought you were talking about DirectX. What's the Rec 2D? Okay, so he's going to lift up his arm like that, put it back down. So we're ready to animate this. Let's get frame zero to hook it up. And we'll throw in one last frame where he's back here and set it to one second so we can see what it looks like. Yeah, that's going to work cool. Hey, at least I did one animation right so far today. Cool. I'm going to do one more little tweak on his hair while he's in that position. I want his hair to like pop up a bit. What's up, Wilski? I've never heard of this. Direct 2D? What's that? Oh, it's... Ah. Wow, I've never heard of it. Cool. Yeah, I could try that, but I have a feeling that the, this is such a small animation that it won't look that good. But let's see. Yeah, see, that's kind of looking weird to me, but let's, let's try it out. Let's see what it looks like with the whole animation. Actually, gosh, when you see it, when you see it animated, it actually looks all right. But maybe, maybe this last frame... He doesn't quite bend that or that leg right there. Something like that. Let's see that again. Yeah, I'm liking it. I think I want to play with the hair one more or the feather, whatever the heck that thing is. This feather right here it just seems off to me putting it like that so let's try it there oh yeah sounds like a sounds like what it just what 
That's what the name is. Yeah, see, that doesn't work with the hair not quite doing anything in that frame there. Just needs to do something here. Maybe that. Cool. I like it. I like it. This is a cool animation. So this is great because I can get him hooked up so he can actually shoot stuff. That means his and I can work on his behavior a little bit too, which means that during this during this live stream, I actually will pretty much have implemented this guy all the way. And then tonight, I can tweak him, make him better, make that walk animation way the hell better. Okay, we got shoot, sweet. Yeah, Teak, what's up, man? Uh, Engifrac, are you using Direct2D? How do, how do you like it, man? This thing has five frames. Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm very good. Things are going great. I'm really excited. I'm excited to be making so many more enemies now. Just focusing on enemies like crazy. Probably for the next, probably for the remainder of this month, I'll be making enemies, bosses too, because that's one of the things that really I need to nail down. Because I'm on track. Um, if my if if I use up the Kickstarter funds, right? If I don't get any any more further funding, which I'm I'm not thinking I'm gonna be able to get any further funding because the pre-sales really aren't going that well, then I'm gonna have to budget really well and actually release the game in December as planned. So I was thinking that I could maybe get till March or whatever to get to release Songbringer, but um, yeah, I'm gonna I've kind of switched up my plan and gone back to December a, a release date. So what I'm gonna do is release it in December and then keep on releasing free updates with more and more content. So what I really want to do in the next month or two is really get the game to a point where it's almost finished. And what what is missing the most of is enemies, bosses, and some some more overworld stuff and items. So if I get all those things done, it'll pretty much be a complete game. And then I can just add cool stuff later through free updates. I wish I could spend as long as I wanted making this game, but the reality is the Kickstarter money is going to run out in December. So I've got to I've got to get something. You know, is if like five grand dropped in my lap or ten grand dropped in my lap, I would be able to keep doing it for another three to six months and make it really really awesome for its first release. But you know, this is reality. So. So we got shoot zero, shoot one, two, three, four, cool. Now if I run it here, wait, let's put, put that back to five frames. Actually we can call this melee if we want, and then when I run into one guy, I'll, I'll see him animate that. Yes, definitely, a game is never finished really. And so I've always had this in mind of releasing it and then making it better through updates. <laughs> oh my god, their walk animation. It's so horrible, right? Oh, it's so funny. Okay, so they're not actually doing this whole animation for the melee, but anyways, I'm gonna turn that back to shoot. And let's make okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna base this off of the um so far the Raw's enemy is the one that um has the shoot so this guy has a shield and he also has a shoot if target any if target in a line if ran smart dirt target launch plasma bolt animate beam dirt none delay ah okay let's give this guy a shoot so we got the small dropped enemy Nice, cool, man. 
That's awesome. Cool. I'm glad you like it. Isn't it isn't it fun to have a game engine that you're like you gel with, you know, that you can make a game with that that's that you find, you know, you that works with you. So it's, it's always a good thing, right? Okay, so this is going to make them launch plasma bolts, which is the which is the weapon of the um the uh the Raz enemy, but that's okay. We'll start with plasma bolts and then we'll move on to creating some like pellets or whatever. Ah, oh yeah, nice. <laughs> That was funny. Sweet. Okay, let's turn off this charge. We don't want him to actually charge the player. And we don't want him to speed up or speed down. Uh, spy more. No, this is not Windows. Oh, you mean you mean Direct 2D? Yeah. If you mean Direct 2D, I think it is. But yeah, um, this game is Windows, Mac, Linux, and also it's gonna be iOS and Retro VGS. Okay, so yeah, we've got the mechanics of having a plasma bolt launch out of this this guy. Now let's set it so we we're actually launching a little pellet or some kind of like. It's actually going to have to be a kind of biggish rock-like thing to be able to... Uh... Hi, Oz, Sean. All right, uh, so he's going to even need to be about this high and stuff. Hello, I'm Perix. Welcome to the stream, man. And thanks, Niche Frack. Why is Cocos 2DX a good choice for my game? Uh, because it's cross-platform and it's C++. And it's open source. So it's cross-platform, meaning I can publish to Windows, Mac, or Linux with all of the same code base. So I write, I write all my game code in C++, right? You know, there's 30,000 lines of code so far in this game. But anyways, it's all in C++. So that means I can... C++ is a great language because it, it's very portable. It can pretty much... That means it can compile on almost any system out there. Um, and it's incredibly fast. And then... Um, Cocos 2DX is cross-platform, so it takes my C++ game code and then wraps it with a little bit more code for whatever platform it's on. So, for example, on Android, it has a little bit of Java code, which gets it started. On iOS, it has some Objective-C code. On pretty much every other platform, it uses C++ to get its, the game started. So, um, so I don't have to implement any of that. Cocos 2DX handles that part. So, yeah, and, and the fourth thing about Cocos 2DX is that I'm very familiar with it, so I highly recommend learning a single game engine and then sticking with it that's my thing because it takes you so long to learn a game engine right once you get a game engine you're happy with and you like and, you, and you're familiar with it you know you've you've gone six months down the road and that's that's a that's a lot of experience that you have if you're if you ever get to the point where you're familiar with the game engine you should be proud of yourself because that's a lot of work you've already done so i don't i don't believe in reinventing the wheel i like i already like this game engine and it's already cross-platform I'm definitely not going to go learn another one at this point, um, unless I want to go to a 3D more a more 3D engine at some point, and maybe I'll do that for another game down the road. But for now, I'm just sticking with Coco 3DX. Nice, good for you. That's cool that your mom's teaching you how to code. That's rad. How do you get Coco 2DX running on PS4, or Xbox? I don't know. But I know that Coco 2DX has plans for porting it to PS4 and Xbox. Um, it's just an OpenGL-based game engine, and it's C++. So I'm pretty sure that PS4 and Xbox can compile. You can compile C++ for them, 
And I'm pretty sure they have some kind of OpenGL-like interface. I'm not sure, though. So I don't think it would be too hard. Yeah, it's true. Cocos is getting more and more 3D support with every release of their game engine. So they're... It may be that I never ever need to switch game engines, which would be awesome. Okay, so back to this guy. He shoots, that's cool, but I want him to have... Um, I want him to have a little pebble or rock or something like that. More like a dart. Let's call this dart. All right, man, see ya. Yeah. Yeah, it's possible to make games for PS4, man, yeah. So I'm thinking something like this. Yeah, good for you, Amperix. That's awesome, man. It's a, I think it's a great way to learn. I wish I wish we had something like Twitch, like this, back when I was learning to make games. It would be would have been sweet. I know it's kind of kind of expensive, right? X Pixel. That's why I'm so excited about the Retro VGS because that all you need for the Retro VGS is a copy of a Retro VGS, and you hook it up straight to your computer with USB. Yeah, Odd Sean, it's coming out on iOS. If you check out the Kickstarter page, um. got all the details and all that and one of the things that happened during the Kickstarter is it reached its second stretch goal which was um, to unlock the iOS platform so yeah it's coming out on iOS Okay, so I hope this is going to be visible, having a, a dart that's this small. <laughs> One frame. Save for web. Cool, good for you learning C++, man. That's awesome. How old are you, Iampirix, by the way? What is the rating? What do you mean? You mean like the like the age rating? I don't know. I I don't know what the age rating is yet because I haven't I haven't released it yet. Yeah, good for you, man. You're 13. You're learning C++. Yeah. Awesome, I'm Perix. It's so rad. Excited for you, man. Okay, so we've got um, them launching these plasma bolts. So I'm going to duplicate the plasma bolt and create a dart. What's up, baby? Oh, you're 11? Whoa, even better. What's up, the Grim Gary? It's not just for breakfast anymore. It's the it, but it is the breakfast of champions. Odd Sean, what is the game called? This game is called Songbringer. 
it's right in the title, man. But it's yeah, here you go, Odd Sean. It's it's called Songbringer. And it's songbringer.com. You can find out a lot more about it there. So okay, we got this Dart P list started. Um, let's go to the Dart and customize it to use this new Dart. Wow, there's a lot of a lot of frames for the plasma bowl. I forgot. So Dart. Percent D. It's only got one frame for now, but I can delete all these other frames. Sounds. No sound yet. Uses the projectile P list. Looks for friends. It, sh it goes really fast. Collisions, shot foe, no pathfinding, no shadow. Actually, these might have a shadow. Let's turn the shadow on for a second. Hey, what's up, Lith? Nice, 43 beaters. Wow, that's great. Uh, you're still trying to figure out how to set up Coco Studio X? Yeah, when you get Coco Studio X, go, just go get it. And then um, if you're not using Rapid Game, go and let me go to a copy of Coco. What the heck? That was weird. Yeah, so once you get Coco Studio X, right? Open up the tests. Just go to this into the build folder. So unpack Coco Studio X. Go into your build folder and open up this Coco Studio test project. Project, build it, and then run it. And that's probably the best way to get started. And from what I've seen. Ah. Uh, Yes, I'm Perix. I'm the only one working on this game. I do the code. I do the artwork you see here, and like I do my art in Photoshop. I do all my code and everything in in Xcode for it with C++ with the game engine called Coco Studio X, and then I do all my sound in um, mostly Audition, and I make my music in Ableton Live, and then I also do the business, which is a very important part of game development. How many games did I make? So many, man. Just one can of Studio X. And one, one egg. Yeah. How's it going? Oh, it's going great, man. Hello, Duty Ba. Yep, it's Coco Studio X. Yeah, I'm just trying to get it working for really quick right now. Yeah, so um, I think this will be good. This dark P list. It's already got a projectile. So okay, so we're ready to go and, and put this into this guy's um, here into his behavior tree. So now he's gonna launch a dart. I think this means it has one. Oh, we want to have. Let's turn the color off. Oh, nice. Yeah, there are some really good ones. Sorzy, hello, welcome to the stream. How did I start? I started when I was um, 14 years old, actually, back in DOS. Yeah, cool, that worked. I mean, I don't want him to have huge explosions like that, but check it out. Those little dart, those little dart thingies work pretty good. Sweet. Okay, now I just got to get him to not explode. <laughs> yeah, I started when I was a kid, man. Just made started making games in DOS, actually, and uh, later on for Windows 95 and all that. And here I am, 20 years later, still making games. Did I make Terraria? No. I, de I definitely did not make Terraria. The last video game I worked on was called Hero Bash. It's for iOS. If you want to check out more about me and what I've done and stuff like that, there's wizardfoo.com and you can look at some of my, my latest games. These are my 2010-ish games, right? 
I worked on a lot of games before 2010, but um, they're just so old and stuff like that. I don't even mention them on my website. So there's Hero Bash. That's the last game I worked on before this, and it's for iOS, and it's a it's a MOBA with cartoon characters. And I made it with my friend. So my friend did all the art. He did all the design for the game too. And I did all the music, sound, and the programming for this game. So that's my last creation. And it wasn't successful. It wasn't financially successful. So it was uh, kind of a it was a hard moment in my life because we had spent a year and a half of our lives making this video game. And we spent $5,000 trying to market it. And we made like $20 a month. So... <clears throat> No, they're shooting. Yeah, they're shooting it at the player. Yeah. Yeah, live GDX totally. Nice. Yeah. Prince of Persia. They've done it. What's the re? Did they didn't they do a re? Um. Sort of like a remaster on it recently. So the first thing I want to do with these darts is make them so they don't explode. So. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna duplicate this projectile. Call it dart. And um the small wait uh launch dart Yeah here we go. I wanna use the dart the dart behavior. Right. <laughs> Thanks, I'm Perix. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How long have I been streaming here? Oh, I gotta get going. It's already been two hours and 15 minutes. Well, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the player back to the home screen and I'm gonna do a little playthrough for you guys. For you guys that have just joined and you're wondering what this game is and stuff, I'll play through a little bit before I go and, and, and end today's stream. Yes, definitely. That's a good idea, Imperix, to start with something very simple like a platformer. What's up, Canadian? Okay, so I'm going back to yeah the start point of the game. So, this, so for everybody that just joined the stream, I'm just about to stop my stream for today, but I will be back tomorrow. I'm here pretty much every single day coding. Um, this game is called Songbringer. It's like Z The Legend of Zelda, except that it's procedurally generated. So when you start your game, you enter six letters, and those six letters are used to generate an entire world. And this is talking, I'm talking about pure procedural generation. So for example, there's Binding of Isaac, which is kind of Zelda-like as well, and it also claims to be procedurally generated. And in fact, it is, but they, the way they do procedurally generated games is they, um, they pre-create a whole bunch of random rooms, and then they randomly arrange them into... Um, to a game world. This is different in that every single tile of this game is actually procedurally generated. So you see me running right here to this dungeon entrance. That's only because I've played this certain world a whole bunch of times. So this certain world I'm playing has um, the world code is wizard. So um, so yeah, you've got the overworld, and then you've got dungeons, and you can. I just worked on these bat enemies yesterday. These bats are looking really really cool now. They move a lot like the bats from Legend of Zelda in the sense that they, they speed up and slow down kind of as a swarm. So they all slow down at the same time and they all speed up again at the same time. So this is a pretty cool enemy. I like this enemy. Um, the game also has... You're going to have tons of items in this game. There's one cool item I, I don't have that I wish I could show you. But it's um it's the teleport and you can teleport forward. But you do have cactuses. You can eat these cactuses. 
and they give you these psychedelic powers to be able to see secret walls and stuff. So there's gonna be tons of secrets in this game, like secret walls, secret dungeons, secret items. Um, and because there's like 300 million different worlds, there better be a lot of cool, fun surprises and secrets and stuff in each world, in each level and stuff. So yeah, there's a there's a little introduction to this game. So that's it for today's stream. <clears throat> awesome, man. Thanks, Flake. Flakes FM. All right, you guys. So yeah, that's it for today's stream. And good night to you guys. And I'll be back tomorrow. Same time, 4 p.m.-ish Pacific time is usually when I start, sometimes later, sometimes earlier. So the best way to follow, the best way to get catch my live streams is to follow me on Twitch, and then you can get alerts. So that's it, you guys. Thanks again for watching. <clears throat>